So the answer to the question is yes. It is feasible to be vegan and yet consume this essential nutrient B12 from non-meat sources. In this case, what the researchers did is they basically looked at fermenting a few different grains, actually to be precise, more like 11, and utilized it in conjunction over this three-day period of time in fermentation with a bacterium which is normally recognized in the production of Emmental cheese, hopefully I have pronunciation that correctly, with Propionic bacterium fruit and ripe cheese. I want to say Freud and right chief for obvious reasons. Don't say Freudian slip, but you don't get what I mean. Propriani bacterium, fruit and rachi, and lactobacillus brevis, which worked in a synergistic combination with keeping the indigenous microbes down, i.e. safe. So, it does raise a lot of questions. Number one, actually I should say a lot of options. Vegans can have a whole food source of vitamin B12 and then it makes you want to look at other historical cultures by some odd chance without interjecting publisher bias to maybe saying, hey, well, they don't have access to duckweed, which is another plant source per se, but maybe they didn't have to have animal sources for their dietary needs. Or let's say, for example, you're a survivalist and you just want to be able to have a fallback just in case you don't have access to animal products. But to proceed as follows. So an easier way to go veggie, veggie. Veggie. B vitamin B12 can be produced during dough fermentation. Grain based materials fermented with propionic bacterium, fruit, and rachi have enough vitamin B12 to be nutritionally significant. And I mean a significant amount. We'll get to that in a second. With the help of Lactobacillus brevis in the fermentation process, vegans can also be guaranteed a sufficient and safe B12 intake, henceforth, the Lactobacillus brevis. We'll get to that directly from grain based food without pills. Researcher used 11 different grain-based materials and fermented them with the Propionic bacterium Phrenorychi, the only B12 producer microorganism accepted for food products. I wanted to emphasize why they used this particular bacterium because it's readily available and accepted for food products. Propionic bacterium Phrenorychi, the essential microbe in Emmental cheese, Emmental or Emmental. Uh, produce nutritionally significant amounts of vitamin B12 in most of fermented grain materials. During the three-day fermentation process, rice bran and buckwheat bran had the highest B12 production. I mean, it was high. We're going to get back to that in a second. High in vitamin B12. Don't be smart. The addition of lactobacillus brevis was able to dominate indigenous microbes during fermentation process and greatly improve microbial safety during the fermentation process itself. All right, now we're going to go to the abstra abstract. The reason the abstract is important here is because they found that the sterilized grains had nowhere near the production level of grains, of course, that were not sterilized. To proceed, the sterilization process, however, alters the technological properties of the grain-based raw materials and decreases the feasibility of the process. The present thesis focuses on situ fortification of vitamin B12 in native grain materials by fermentation with P. Frunarachi. To proceed, thus, an effective co-culture of Lactobacillus brevis, there's a numerical there, and basically propionic uh, bacterium Phrenorychi was established through a pre-screening to ensure microbial safety. Micro microbial, microbial, microbial safety. During co-fermentation in wheat bran, the Phrenorychi produced a high level of vitamin B12, 183 nanograms per gram, I assume that's dry weight on day three. All right, for those not familiar, is a thousand nanograms in a microgram. So the RDA, which we could debate, is 2.4 micrograms of B12 per day. So you're looking at 2,400 nanograms. Keep those numbers in mind for comparison. Moreover, controlling pH during fermentation can greatly enhance the vitamin B12 production up to 332 nanograms or gram dry weight by day three. Now, that's not the best part. We're gonna get to that in a second. So here we go. Rice bran and buckwheat, phenomenal. The highest production was found in the rice bran, 742 nanograms per gram. So three to four grams, nothing more than rice bran to this fermentation process, at least the biological activity is basically up there, would be enough to suffice meeting at least the current RDA. 
followed by buckwheat bran at 631 nanograms. So that's even closer to about four grams being right on target at 2.4 after fermentation. Meanwhile, the addition of lactobacillus brevis was able to dominate indigenous microbes during fermentation thus greatly improved my microbial safety during the fermentation of different grain materials. To conclude, overall, this thesis, which we'll have links to, demonstrates that the fermentation of grain materials with P. fruit and reichi, I want to say fruit and reichi so bad, but fruit and reichi, or reichi, reichi, in appropriate cold culture, such as lactobacillus brevis, is a promising way to provide vitamin B12 in non-sterilized grain-based materials without compromising microbial safety. Meanwhile, selecting raw materials to provide optimal conditions for Funarichi can significantly improve the efficacy of vitamin B12 synthesis. So you see, what we have here is basically proof on point, as far as not showing a correlation, but showing a causative argument, that generally that we have here is bacterial fermentation can be utilized in combination with certain grains in producing vitamin B12 for human consumption without utilization of animal byproducts. So it has a major, major scope of impact for a lot of different uh, basically dimensions in regard to global, historical, future, dietary, so forth and so forth, because it basically takes the wall down on the traditional bias that B12 is the one exception why vegans can't be vegan or people can't survive without access to adequate meat sources. So bacterial fermentation through lactobacillus brevis or propionibacterium bacterium fruit and right cheap with certain grains, rice bran, buckwheat, so on and so forth, significant, significant impact and safety for the dietary consumption of B12 should one need. Again, Ralph the channel signing off. Hope you find this information in use. There will be links to the thesis and look forward to see you all once again in the next seven days and gratitude. Catch you all next time. Bye.